When the world has got you down and Alzheimer's sucks. It's an equal opportunity disease that chips away at everything we hold dear. And to date, there's no cure. So until there is, we continue to fight with the most powerful tool in our arsenal, love. This is Love Conquers Alls, a real and really positive podcast that takes a deep dive into everything Alzheimer's, the good, the bad, and everything in between. And now, here are your hosts, Susie Singer-Carter and me, Don Priest. Hi, it's Susie Singer-Carter. And I'm Don Priest, and this is Love Conquers Alls. Hello, Susan. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever good it, is. whatever it Every is. Day is. It's morning. morning. It's definitely morning. It's morning, morning. <laughs> for me because I don't sleep ever. It's like, yeah. this is it. So it, it just feels like it's morning. It's That's okay. Morning. That's okay. Yeah. I've, got, I've yeah. got me caffeine and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Busy week. Busy it's been week. a busy week. Still working on No Country for Old People a lot, mm-hmm. which is our documentary um, for long-term care reform, which is incredibly necessary. So if you um, if you haven't, please head on over to the National Consumer Voice website. There's a dedicated page for us to donate to support this film. It's really important. We have an amazing. Uh, we've ag- aggregated so many incredible voices in this in this community of of advocates, like dedicated advocates, and and I'm really proud of it. And um, I think I think we have a really good chance at making making some movement, at least activating it and activating a, a bigger movement that we need. So so we can really use your help. So please, please do that. And I'll also 100% have 100% tax deductible. Yep. 100%. <laughs> and I'll put you know, all the good, information good in the you. notes. Good for us. Good for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Absolutely. Um, so on a, on, a, on a flimsy note, where are you going this weekend, Dawn? <laughs> I'm actually leaving me to do all the work. Uh, oh my God! I'm leaving for. <laughs> I'm leaving for. I'm. I'm heading out to Palm Springs immediately after this. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I'm going to be there for all of about uh, 12, 24 hours. That's wow. the And I'm coming back. Yeah. Wow. I have a couple friends in from Chicago. I haven't seen them since before COVID. That's a vacation. And, uh, out that's there. a big K. Yeah. It's a big vacay. So I'll yeah, get there. Yeah. In our in production you know, life, that's a vacay. <laughs> yeah. So. And then, you know, and then I got to rush back Sunday night because uh, my other project I'm working on, my Jack Warner documentary, we're shooting this week. Uh, my producer's in from New York, and we're going to be uh, gallivanting around shooting, editing. I am very fancy. You're fancy. I mean, it's what I do. You're like, Fanciness is my middle name. Yeah. It's not. But, uh, but no, it's uh, – it's, so I'm looking forward to that. you know, to editor now. I really am, <laughs> <laughs> and but I can't wait. You know, once we finish that, rolling right into uh, into No Country for Old People, it's going to oh be crazy. Gosh, so it's I'm a taking beast. advantage of this 36 hour vacation because I, I, yeah. you know I will be at you with a whip, just like uh. <laughs> what, no sleeping. Let's get this done. No we sleeping. Have, for, we have no to get sleeping this done. for old people. <laughs> no, no sleeping for old people. <laughs> Don's actually only 25. Look what happened. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> His hair is now gray. I know. <laughs> Sorry. It hurts. It Sorry. Hurts, but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, whatever. It's, for, it's fine. It's for a good cause. It's fine. It is. It is. We, we have a super so cool I guest. Think, I, I have a good I have Yeah, a, a we do. Really nice I can't wait. You. We do. Yes. Look at us. Just blah, blah, blah. We do. <laughs> Ba, 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 ba. Okay. Should we? Should I tell them all about yes. our fabulous? Yes. Please kids? do. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. Yes. Here we go. Uh, Dr. Buffy Lloyd Krejci is one of the foremost authorities on infection prevention and control in nursing homes and long-term care facilities. She's the author of Broken: How the Global Pandemic Uncovered a Nursing Home Industry in Need of Repair and the Heroic Staff Fighting for Change. Her practice, IPC Well, is devoted to mitigating infectious diseases and inappropriate antibiotic prescribing in all healthcare settings to reduce adverse events, infections, antibiotic resistance, readmissions, and death. Dr. Buffy consults with healthcare facilities across the United States and internationally with Doctors Without Borders. 
With more than 20 years of healthcare and public health experience, Dr. Buffy's data-driven approach is hands-on and collaborative. Using her experience with more than 200 nursing homes across the U.S., she works tirelessly to combat the estimated 1 to 3 million infections, leading to more than 380,000 deaths every year in the nursing home industry. She's on a mission to change the way our elders are treated and given care. I could go on and on. In fact, let's do that. Let's go on and on and meet the <laughs> one, the only, Dr. Buffy Lloyd Krejci. Hello, Dr. Buffy. Hello, Hi, Dr. Guys. Buffy. Hi, I like to call you Dr. For Buffy. Me today. Thank yes, you for being here. Do. I love it. I love Lloyd it. Lloyd Krejci is a little hard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you forget, you know, the, to say the entire the name. The entire name, more. yes. <laughs> That's okay. It was edited out. Yes. So unprofessional, Indeed. Don. <laughs> <laughs> how, how are you? you I, I know you've been working I'm, really hard writing a new book. Yes, yes, I am. So it's, you know, we're talking still about Broken because this Broken just launched last year, April. Um, 2022 and I didn't I didn't really take a breath I jumped right into I think it's upside it up. down it's upside down <laughs> look at look at this what are you I'm Trump? tired <laughs> okay let me do, let me do that again take two Let's try it she, again she's, she's showing how broken it is I am it is. not it me there it's really a good no. book I had my my, my co-producer just finished reading it too and um she she's she's a faster reader than me she was like, I'm done. She was, it's very, it's very <laughs> packed, impactful and, and packed full of things. Incredible. A lot of work went into that book. Yeah. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I just, um, I was just really wanting to capture my experience during the pandemic with what I was seeing and really advocate for change. I mean, that's my whole point of doing this. And then really writing my second book, it's more geared towards the consumer and really how to navigate this system. Because like yourself, I mean, people people have loved ones in long-term care or senior care now, or they're entering senior care. And we can't wait. I mean, we need to actively work on fixing the system, but what about today? So exactly. I'm... I'm having a lot. I'm having a lot more fun writing the second book because it's not as traumatic, um, and it's really solution driven as far as finding some of these really great practices. So that's that's been pretty cool. Well, that that actually is a that that puts a little lift in my in my in my step because it's I am also like you were in broken. I am in it. I am in the trenches right now, yeah. and, it, and it feels very heavy. The conversation is heavy. And, and yeah, the system does need to change. But the thing that really, like to reiterate what you said, that haunts me is that right now, every day, every minute, somebody's suffering. And so right. the longer it stays the way it is, the, the, the more people are affected by it. And so we do need some solutions that are, you know, Band-Aid solutions, as it were, because there is a huge, bigger problem, but we need to be able to address some the things that we can at least, right? Um, yeah. So, well, before we get into what those are, because I know you have some a lot of thoughts on that, right? But but just just if you could truncate a little bit of, of your experience that motivated the book Broken. Yeah, I mean, so I've worked in healthcare uh, really since I was seventeen, so it's now now over thirty years. <laughs> I just keep 20 years on there because that doesn't make me so old. But, um, you know. <laughs> a ageism. See, I, there it is. Well, yeah. And there it 30 is. years is over 20 years. So, it, you know, there so you it's go. fine. There yeah. you go. Um, but I've always had a passion for, you know, helping in in healthcare. Um, and both my grandparents actually died in nursing homes when I was only 19, and I navigated that system back then. You know, for me, I was really grateful that my grandparents had a safe place as far as mm -hmm. what I knew to be a safe place. And I, and I still would maintain that they did have a safe place. And, um, you know, there were a lot of things that obviously could have been different. Now I understand the, the industry more, but... Um, you know, I, 
I've had my family, but I've always, you know, kind of stayed in working in healthcare. And in 2015, I started working on a national pilot study with CDC and Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. And I started working, this is really what cracked me open to the long-term mm -hmm. care industry and seeing the disproportionate number of infections that were occurring. And I kind of looked around and I'm like, who's working on this? You know, like there wasn't a whole lot of action. I mean, we were doing this pilot study, but actually um, after this study was done, you know, nationally, it all kind of went away. And I just was like, I'm not done. So in 2017, I launched out, I started my own company and I said, I'm gonna help these nursing homes. I'm gonna really do everything I can. I had no idea what I was doing. I was very naive and <laughs> um, had no idea what an uphill battle I was Sometimes facing. you need and to then, be naive, but be, right? Sometimes yeah, that, that yeah right. Otherwise, help. you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. I say yeah, that all the time because yeah. that, that's how I feel. Before you move on, I want to. What kind of things were you seeing in 2015? So, it would give us just a, a sense of what it looked like then, and then as you progress and tell us yeah. more. So it was. Um, just to give everybody an understanding, infection control practices were not even really strong at that time. I mean, we're, we're talking seven years, seven, eight years ago. It wasn't that long ago. And because they just didn't, they were really focused. When I say they, I mean like public health and CMS focused on other priorities like falls mm -hmm. and antipsychotic use and some other areas. So, you know, here you have this industry that has these infections, but it's almost considered just normal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just normal for the residents to have UTIs or or um, pressure ulcers or right. pneumonia or influenza or scabies. Like, it's just part of their world. Um, and it didn't, there just wasn't this heightened um, sense of urgency to any of it. So what I, working with the healthcare setting and working with healthcare professionals, the overwhelming response, which is very similar to today, is we just don't have time to focus on this. We have it comes, it comes with the territory. all these, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's just, there's just, you know, in long term care, it's kind of a whack a mole. And I talk about this in my book. You know, it's like we, you know, there's <laughs> I say it, that all the like time. It's like you just, you're just, yeah, you're just, you know, you dealing with this, but you, there's very, there's such a lack of prevention mm -hmm. within this industry. Reaction, and I can see right? why. Well, it's reaction because they are so short-staffed. They don't mm -hmm. have what they need very often. And so it has to be react reactive. Right. Like they don't have in place. Now, when I say they, it's the majority of what I see. I have seen some phenomenal long-term care facilities that really have changed their culture and, and work on implementing prevention practices. And that's what I would love to spread <laughs> across the country is that attitude and that, and to, to know it's successful, but boy, to get there, there's so many layers of other things that we have to deal with. So it's it's not just so simple, <laughs> you know, it's just But it prevent, shows it can be know. done. It shows it, it can, does. you know, because everyone thinks it's such a big problem that it's too big. You can't do anything about it, but it can be done. We have models that show that it can be done. And so is it is it just money as to why it's not being done? A lot of it is the, um, you know, the, and, and I haven't gone down this rabbit hole and I quite frankly don't want to because I know what I'll see, but I'm sure you guys have maybe, but there is a lot of, of you know, um, corrupt dealings. And I, and I do mention that in my book, you know, and so it's like, um, for let's say a corporation to profit hundreds of millions of dollars and that goes into the the shareholders pockets right not sure that that should ever be happening when we're talking about our frontline staff can't even make a living wage you know and they're the ones caring for our loved ones so like we have to look at all of that and we have to have the accountability of where these funds are going because it's you know, we can't simply say we need more funding, you know, because then on the other side, you look at it, you're like, well, we provide you more funding. Where right. is it going? Is it well, going right. where it's supposed to go? Or is it going into people, you know, the shareholders pockets? Like, 
what the are ladder. you doing? That is that that is it. You're right. Yeah. The facilities follow, follow that the I see the the facilities that I see that are very successful and I would say I would feel safe having my loved one here are the ones that put everything back into the facilities. Right. It's they're not they're not the ones that are are just trying to squeeze every dollar and like they are they're investing in infection pre- prevention practices. They're in, investing in the staff. They're investing in education. Um, so it is possible. It's just it is. Are we going to make that a priority? And they exactly. can you know they can make they can still they could do both meaning that they don't yes. have to i mean and i'm saying how much anyone should make but if let's say they just made tens of millions instead of hundreds of millions <laughs> right. you know it's fine we know these it's a business and we understand that right you know, because if not but and so everyone could still make you know a, a very nice amount of money and there'd still be plenty left over to actually do what they're there to do Right, and but, because right now that it's just it's it's greed, and it's it is greed, and I mean, it's also that's, that's the a, first step. It's a lack of regulation and a lack of oversight because you know there hasn't been attention put on it. it you know the infrastructure was made, and then it's like it's implemented, and then it's like here now it's going to work. Well, of course, if there's billions of dollars available, you're going to get nefarious actors to 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 want to take advantage of it, and that's just human nature that happens in every business and it you know and that's just that's just it and so you know we've we've sort of uh when i say we uh, you know as a community as a society we haven't really paid attention to that and we assume that it's being handled properly like we because we pay into that system we are the we are the providers of that system but you know it's not it's not, and that's what, why you, well, you're... Well, so what, what people don't realize is that there is oversight, and if, if any, and the reg... So there is oversight, and there there's almost over-regulation to the point where it's not effective. So the nursing home industry is actually the second most regulated industry in this country next to nuclear power. But the problem is when things happen, the regs get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which make it actually, it's almost like they just keep throwing it on top of it. So it makes it impossible to really um, understand what there, it's just too convoluted. It's not, we need to like strip it down and actually have a set, you know, the regulations that aren't thousands and thousands of pages long right. so that people truly understand. And the regulators that come into the facilities because they're under trained. I mean, that's, I talk about that in my book. That's a broken system as well. They are under trained. They don't even necessarily have the expertise. They are given a certain amount of time to really evaluate our, the facilities. Mm-hmm. It's more of a bullying system. It's not really like this collaborative approach. So it's like kind of this gotcha mentality. So it's not like it's the, the surveyors are doing what they can. Let's say they have six hours. They're going to pick apart every all the really easy stuff to see. The, the low-hanging fruit. The yeah. mm-hmm. Right, because that's all the time they have. Right. So that whole regulatory reform needs to change as well. Yeah. And I argue that it, it needs to, like, that needs a whole overhauling because, like you mentioned, we've just, we've added layer and layer and layer and layer and layer over the years. And... Well, there may be stuff that's in there from 50 years ago that we're not doing anymore. You know what I mean? It's not relevant. It's not relevant. Right. 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 So we have to really evaluate that. Yeah. And, and, and Dr. Buffy, I think that at every, every layer of the system, like from, from the regulators who are, or the right, the policy writers and the regulator, you know, all of that, each, each department is just trying to, to complete what they have to do without, because they don't have the time to do a forensic look and say, let's really tear this apart, you know, like cleaning out your closet, right? What don't we need anymore? What don't we wear? Let's throw it out because you're right. It's, and, and it becomes at the end of the day, the, the, our, our front line are, are bearing the brunt of it. I know right. that. And, and right. so we are losing a lot of, of the dedicated yes. and we're losing a lot of the, the skilled and the vocational 
uh, you know, frontliners, and we're getting people in just to fill the boxes and the spaces. That's unfortunate. So that that compounds the issue. But um, I kind of want to circle back to what you do because I think what what you do is such a unique, you know, uh, profession. It, you know, to go in and to to, to identify infection because infection is is like it's it is the root of all evil for any of our of our elder families members yeah right? yeah so so we what we actually do um i have a team of three other infection preventionists myself and um which is we're just really starting to make an impact which i'm so grateful for because we go into the nursing homes we work with their staff so what we're doing is we're you know, I can't be in that building all the time. So right. I I want to educate and equip the staff that are there so that when I leave, they know what they need to do. Now, the funding that we get typically is only for one visit. So how much good can you do with one visit? So we try to do everything we possibly can, and then we leave them with like a report, with a toolkit, and you know we offer them a lot of free you know resources as well, so they can um, they can keep you know they can get as much information as possible. But also we have, and I'm very grateful for this, and it is through um, CMS. So it's it's just interesting because CMS is the regulator. They're also they fund the quality improvement organizations, and that's who we're funded through. So we've got quality side and regulatory side, um, but we're funded to go in and help these nursing homes. And I'm really excited because we just got funding to support 30 nursing homes um, in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Minnesota to work with them for a year like we get to work with them for one year and we get to come on site every three months we get to work with them monthly and what we're trying to do is we are working to implement best practices we're helping to shift their perspective from this reaction to prevention it's a lot easier to prevent than to try to mitigate and and stop the outbreaks that's right and so it's really interesting though we have to start from the very 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 basics for example i'm pulling some data that we did over the last year and and can you believe that still 50 percent of the buildings we go into do not have good access to alcohol-based hand rub if we cannot have a proper way to conduct hand hygiene which is the number one way that infections are spread is through our hands like that's where we start. Okay, fine. That's where we start, you know? And so that's, right. we go in and we do like an environmental scan. Basically we're looking, we're talking to the housekeepers because if you have housekeepers cleaning your toilets first and then go in and cleaning your tray table, you're spreading all sorts of stuff all over the entire building. So we really get down to the basics. And what's exciting is we get, as we get to work with the facilities over time, then we start to work on, you know, the preventions of the UTIs and the, um, the, all the, the wounds, you know, all the different types of potentially, um, you know, pneumonia. We get actually work with the designated infection preventionists right. and the staff in, in working to truly prevent these practices. But it's not something that, you know, if you have a culture that's been running, like, for example, I had a housekeeper, one of my I, one of my infection preventionists was on site last week in Michigan, and she just told her the simp simple thing, which I've been telling you is to clean the resident's room first, to not cross-contaminate. And she goes, I have been cleaning the resident restroom first for 25 years, and nobody has told me anything different. Wow. I mean, that's just something really basic we can right. start with. Right. So and, we have to start there. And when we talk, you know, we talk go, circling back to, you know, money. Isn't prevention way cheaper than reaction? Don't, don't the, the people who run these facilities realize, oh, my gosh, this <laughs> I'd be making even more money if we just prevent all this stuff from happening. Or is it that, it they're, is. you know, I mean, it's that, that seems like common sense. It is, but I think as humans, we're not the greatest at prevention. We're not the greatest at maintenance. Like, you know, we know if we go and we get our oil changed in our car every 3,000 or 5,000 miles, that's going to help protect our engines. But 
Does everybody do that? Or if we go to the dentist every six months, that's going to prevent us from having cavities, you know? So yes, prevention actually does save money. It saves harms in the long run, but we, we're so deep into the trenches with reaction that you've got, you've got to have, you absolutely have to have dedicated leadership. And I'm talking the administrator and the director of nursing. You have to have those two roles absolutely dedicated to turning the ship around or it won't happen. I mean that I have just seen it building after building after building. We have to have leadership buy-in. You have to. And, and, yeah. It's interesting. Yesterday we were having a conversation um, with a uh, with a lawyer who this is his voc is is he defends you know for elder abuse and and and, and it's a few, it's really an exercise in futility at this time right so but you know I, I asked him you know and he he's very lovely man very very driven by his heart and he was talking about you know at the very least it's like he goes it's talking about infection it's like it's 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 not a new concept like. And he, and he he read a quote from Florence Nightingale that you know for the, back in the day, and I'm going to read it. She said, "If a patient is cold, if a patient is feverish, if a patient is faint, if he's sick after taking food, if he has <clears throat> a bed sore, it's generally not the fault of the disease, but of the nursing." And and this is you know back in the day. So it's 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 really in the basics of the tenet of being a caregiver a provider, you know, or the front line is to, is infection is number one, you know, and, and that's why doctor, you know, surgeons wash their hands so thoroughly and put on their gloves and, and the whole thing. You feel, you, you, you assume, I think as a, as, as, as the, the consumer, you know, for lack of better, you, you assume, like you said, you assumed your, your grandparents were well, and I assumed my mom was well. Yeah. Always, I did. I slept. I thought I could sleep barely well at night. But you assume that they know that. So it's really, it's kind of disheartening that they don't. Well, I think they do. And here's the challenge. So I kind of, I talk about this. I say, the, the problem is, one of the problems, let's say, and this is why we have so many really, really important and good healthcare professionals leaving the industry in just absolute record numbers. Mm-hmm. And so let's say you have a nurse and they love the elderly and they really feel it in their heart. They're called to work in this space. And mm -hmm. they, you know, I, I have a um, infection preventionist that works w with me that worked in a nursing home for 10 years and she couldn't take it anymore and she had to leave. And here's, here's what, what happens. So you're, you're, you're saving the best nurse in your class. You're skilled. You, you know what to do. And now you're given... 30 patients or, you know, the, the yeah. certified nursing assistants, like you cannot humanly deliver the quality of care. If you don't have the, if you have the workload that far exceeds what is humanly possible. And right. that happens. That is a big problem within our, our long-term care. The other thing is, you know, we talked about, you know, sometimes pulling profits, you know, just, being so just, I've had, I've had nurses tell me, Dr. Buffy, my corporate won't buy hand sanitizer. They won't buy gloves. They won't buy gowns. They won't buy sharps containers. Like they want to do they want it, the right. right thing. But so often I, I describe it like they're in a straight jacket. They're trying to do what they can with Agreed. what they have to work with. And so what happens is that causes moral injury to them because they know that it's going against their own values. They know they can't deliver the quality of care that, that this resident deserves. Exactly. And they, they just can't, they can't continue doing it. And this is, the, but this is what I was actually referring to, the the administration, and and because that yeah. that's where it has to come from. So when they don't provide that, and they don't provide san, you know the the uh, right the uh, back antibacterial, so all that stuff, and they don't they don't give that kind of um, training, then then it's on them, and and it's really it's really their responsibility because that's their job. The description of their job is to administrate it, and the and that's where we're failing because they're being told what to do above that. Right. And so you know the buildings that I see that are 
are more successful are, you know, when, when you've got kind of more of that autonomy of that leadership, the administrator, the director of nursing, and they are, they really do have the, the corporate support or they're a single, you know, just standalone facility. Um, the, where it starts to, where it starts to fall apart from what I've seen is where, when you have corporate leaders that are so far, so far high above, they're so removed they're not necessarily in it for the care. Look, this this is a vocation of a calling. And if you don't really have that, I say you don't really belong in long-term care because it is, these are, you know, such precious human beings and, and mm -hmm. you know, we can't just throw them away or treat them as if they're not valuable anymore because they are. And... Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it's that, you know, when I see, and, you know, again, there's, I, I get to see all of it. So for me, it can be, it can be challenging because I see the heroic staff, you know, and that's what I write about in Broken. I see the heroic staff, including administrators that are like, you know, I could go and make a lot more money somewhere else, but I'm going to stay here because I care about this population. Right. But then on the other side, I see administrators that never leave the door of their, their office, you know, and don't have any clues to what's happening. So I, I see the whole gamut of it. Um, and, you know, for me, it's like, I just want to take these best practices that I'm seeing, um, and, and really say like, this is possible and, you know, like, like, let's shift these practices over. But, um, you know, and a good friend of mine, Dr. Michael Wasserman, he, he, he does a lot of great advocacy in California and, you know, he will tell you time and time again, it has to come from the leadership if we don't have to. the leadership buy-in. And how do we get yeah, to them? How, I mean, do you how, get... do we, how do we make them understand? How do we make – I mean, it seems so simple. If you could go to one f facility and despite all the regulations and the 50-year-old things, that, you know, they're still doing it and they're doing right. it right. And they've got to have you know, a bottom line that shows this works. It not only works on the human level, but it works financially. Um, how is it so hard to get to these people and show, you know, if you do it this way, it's actually better for you? I mean, why can't, why doesn't this happen? I think that from my observation, and like I said, for the second book, I'm, I'm writing and I'm interviewing, you know, like these different best practices. Um, like, have you heard of the greenhouse model? Yes. Yes. So spoke it's, to Alan it's, Power, who is, very, yeah, who's, yes. Very much more of that community based, like where it's not just this big institution. Yeah. Um, you know, we have to start with asking our loved ones when they it, we have to we have to shift it from what's good for the business to what's good for the residents and our patients. You know, we have to get back to that. And the 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 long term care places that I see that really have it right. They have that focus 100% on the residents, and as family members and as consumers, we need to we need to kind of put on our, you know, we need to be discerning and seeing like are they like are they putting their profits or their business over over the People. needs of the residents? Absolutely, they, they are. And and so and, and... <laughs> we have to have a shift of a, that's where you know like. So we talk about, you know, we have, you know, more, with more funding, we have to have accountability of where does that funding go and, um, and making sure that it does go to the specific staff or that goes to where it needs to go. Um, but we need to, so it, it just, to me, it's like, and, you know, I, I hear a lot of industry leaders really rising up and even speaking out saying, if you're not in this because you care, then just leave our industry because that you're, you're ruining it for everybody. And, and, and we need to get back to caring for our loved ones in a way that supports community. them and yeah. And the community and you community. know what? I am hopeful, you know, last year I, I, I've been, I've seen, I'm seeing a huge shift and you're part of this movement is people stepping up and coming out and saying, all right, something needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a nursing home administrator last week. I interviewed him for my book and he left the industry after being in it 10 years. And he's actually, cause he just couldn't handle the corruptness anymore, right. you know, and he's actually going to start his own community in the way he believes that it should be done. So I think there are people that are rising up and saying, you know, we love, we love this, this group of people. I love this group of people. Me too. And, 
and and they need us we can't turn our back because it's too hard and so i think collectively as we continue talking about it like we are today we can really promote change and and i'm seeing that happen more and more i agree and, and i make, think yeah. i think it just has to be a bit we have to continue to 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 promote that and to encourage that because i spoke to a nurse yesterday who i was interviewing who, who, her and her husband, she got out of the corporate hospice, you know, as a nurse because she couldn't take it anymore. And she's, they've started their own, you know, nursing home so they could run it the way they want to with, yeah. you know, tender, loving care and, and just doing it the right way. And it's, you know, I think, I think taking it back into the hands of the community is really important because we, every time you, that you you don't you know you you assume that something's being taken care of and it takes it off your plate it you know then you know if we're not looking something's going on and we've we've not looked for too long that's what's happened right. and so you know we put the fox in the hen house to guard the hen house yeah, is what's happened yeah and you know the the pandemic if there is a silver lining to that and you talk about this is what your show mm -hmm. is about is really you know looking at the silver lining and it's number one it's raised these awarenesses i mean our loved ones your loved one was your mom was locked away she you couldn't visit her and so there was a lot a lot a lot of things that happened as the result of that and so um it's really cracked the whole i think it's really cracked things open and um which is good it needed that and you know as as we as we look towards the future uh the aging population is growing and you know we need to improve upon senior care services so that we have the the care not for our parent you know for like my parents are entering that for ourselves and you know some people say close all the nursing homes down you know everybody can go home that's not that's not it's realistic. Not so, no. you know, home care is an option and aging in place is an option. <laughs> and some. if you can do that, that's great. There's resources. I mean, I'm diving more into that, but that's not a reality for everybody. So no. we have to look at this, what we have in place now and, and build upon it and improve upon it. And, um, and, you know, it's going to take a lot of work and I don't have all the answers. And, you know, it does come from a lot of it comes from the top. It comes from political leadership and people standing up and saying that they're willing to make a change. But it also comes from the bottom. It comes it comes from both. Right. It comes from us in the field coming up and it comes from that leadership. You know, the the, the political coming. We have to have right. both. We have yeah. to have both, and but it, we have to got we have to steer our political guidance, you know, because absolutely, they, you know, we need to help steer them. I say we need to shame the hell out of them, but you know, that's not. I mean, honestly, they. I can't tell you how many people I've interviewed now who have been amazing advocates who have, you know, spent years writing policy and getting it right to the door and getting it passed and passed yeah. and passed, and then they get to the door of the governor, and the governor goes and shuts the door. Right. You know, and it, and they're heartbroken, and it literally breaks their heart. Like it, it, because no one does this for anything else but, but because they care. If you're mm -hmm. advocating in this arena, you're not doing it for anything else but, but because you really, really care. And so when you when that when those doors get shut, it's 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 so devastating. It's so heartbreaking, and and it can be. You know, you can. There's you want to become. It's so hard not to become nihilistic because you just think, is there, where are all the good people? Where's the conscience? We need the conscience. We need the collective conscience. Well, and I think right? that's there what, is, you know, there's good. Yeah. 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 No, I was going to say, you, you said, you know, just a few minutes ago that you love these people and the people who are trying to make change along with you and Susie and everybody are that you love these people. Guess what? These people are us. These people right. are our kids. Yes. These people are the the people who are making these bad policies. These people are everybody because everybody. everyone's going there. So, you know, if you think that, you know, oh, I don't have to worry about it for, you know, 30 more, whatever. It's everybody. Blink and, and everybody you're there, my know, friends. Blink and you're there. <laughs> it's all your friends. It's your yeah, family. It's, it's everyone. everybody. So and it's, what are we talking about? And here? why are we trying to stay alive longer? I mean, I'm going to, you know, just to be esoteric about it, but it's like, you know, here we are, we're, we're all health conscious, you know, we eat well, we exercise, we think about longevity, it's such a goal for all of us, and yet, w when we get there, 
which is which is an honor, which is a privilege supposed to be. We are devalued. We are there. We are completely disregarded. There's bias. If I hear, if I could hear, your mom was 89. One more time, I want you know. It's like I don't care about the number. We don't. The number is the number. This is a human being. And. And every human being, it's, a, it's really a case of humanity. As if to say she had 89 years of a good yeah, life, so it so, so doesn't matter. I, doesn't matter. From here on out, it doesn't matter. Her, every, yeah. and no, her, the rest right. of her days do not matter. For the at least. Out. At least, well, you know, she, she mm-hmm. at least she's an 89. At least she did that. Mm-hmm. No, well, don't forget that she got, you know, with Alzheimer's or if you have cancer or whatever – you've been robbed of of some quality of life so you deserve to have as long a life as you want in the best way possible you deserve that the quality Quality. of life (laughs) everybody deserves that some not so much no i'm kidding no there's a few there's a few (laughs) (laughs) but you know well you're right and that and that's really what what i see too and and my heart really that it's the quality and for me, what I see and that, and that, you know, so that's what, what I'm doing is, is I'm going at it from the angle of, of empowering and equipping the healthcare workers. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've had healthcare workers cry with me and say, nobody tells me, thank you. Nobody tells me I'm doing a good job. And I tell my staff, like, if all we do is go in and make somebody feel loved today, then we've done our job. Oh my like, gosh, because they yeah. just don't get that. And so even as consumers, you know, you know, just going in and thanking the staff. And, oh, and, oh, my gosh. You know, and I, I did that did all the time. So yeah, yeah, I did. I know. I used to say, you're, you did, but... you're just so good with my mom. You put the cream on her. Thank you so much. Did she love it? I know my mom is very tactile. You know, I would tell them, I go, and they go, oh, your mom. And, you know, and, and then you, when you talk to people like that, you, you, you know, you disarm them because everyone's on their guard. And Absolutely. You, be, you have to be a human. You have to be a human. Can I just tell you one of the first things that I noticed when I became, you know, having to, when I realized I had to be there every day last year for the last six months. And I remember I was standing out in the hallway and I'm waiting for them to, to do something with my mom. And one of the women that was a resident there was in a chair and she was, I could hear her, you know, she was, she was bitching about something. No, 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 no. So I was, went over to the, she was in the dining room talking to other residents. And I said, I heard her and she said, yeah, three days. I can't get, I can't get any dental floss. I've had something caught in my tooth for three days. I said, wait a minute, are you, do you need dental floss? Oh my God, I have something stuck in my tooth for three days. I go, I can't, I can't even, I can't with that. I mean, I can only imagine if I had something stuck in my tooth, what that feels like, right? I said, hold on, because I, I had just gotten one, of, like I was at some convention where they gave away like those things, those, I got a free one that, that was a keychain. I said, it's in my purse, but it's locked. I'll go get it. Went and got it, brought it to her, and she said, it was as if I gave her a pot of gold. Sure. Right? Sure. And she said, can I pay you? I said, no, just don't. Oh. I said, this is for you. Don't lose it. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it's those little things that they, you, why? Why no dental floss? Why? Like, like this is what you pack when you go on a trip. I mean, let's think about the basics of humanity. Right. Dental floss, touching, you know, communication, all those things are so important. And, and right. what we teach our kids, wash your hands. You were outside, right. wash your hands. I mean, but it be, And they it, don't cost anything. Well, dental no, floss does, but, dental but floss no, does. They, all these things don't cost any. How many things do you go through that say, you know what? That doesn't cost anything. That doesn't cost anything. That doesn't, I mean, how many. Yeah, a lot of it's even just behavioral changes, you know, like I talk about, you know, the way they're cleaning a bathroom and, you know, I was a single mom for a long time. So I, I consider myself real scrappy. So I come in there and I don't tell them, oh, you need these fancy robots to clean your room. No, I'm like, you know, here's how we can do it with what we've got. Right. 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 Um, Because, you know, I know that's their number one thing they're always saying is we don't have the extra money. Resourceful. 
you be resourceful. You know, like hand yeah. sanitizer dispensers, the vendors will get, will put them in the building for free. They do not charge them for the dispensers because you're buying their product. And hand sanitizer is a heck of a lot cheaper than infection of MRSA, you know. So <laughs> it's like, Oof. so I try to, you know, do that as well, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of work to be done, but I, I really do... I, I just love talking, you know, sharing these experiences because it, it's giving other people more courage to speak up. And, you know, we can't, for me, it's not just about like pointing out the problems, but it's like, what are the solutions and get into the solution. And I'm really proud of the work we're doing because every day, I mean, next week I have an infection preventionist doing nine site visits and the week before we had 14 done. So every single week we're doing anywhere from, we're doing about 30 nursing homes every month. And I just love that because that's a group of 30 people, you know, a group of 30 buildings that we can impact. And then I'm on national webinars telling, you know, so we're just really trying to impact and, and, and penetrate the industry with these, with, first of all, I always come from a space of love and light and, you know, just partnering with them um, because I know how hard their jobs are, but I want to empower them. And um, I just, I am not. I don't have the power to pay them more to, you know, right. like that's where we need strong leadership to, 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 you know, and coming from the government too of, of making some of these mandates as well to that support the workers that are, are in, mm -hmm. in these facilities, because let's nurture them, take care of them so they can nurture our moms and take care of our moms you know, like that's that's where it comes from. It does, and I don't think that saying, you know, it takes a village could mean it could be any more appropriate than in this arena because it really does take a village. Even as a caregiver, you have to sure see like what you're doing is you're sharing the perspective of the of the front line so that when we go in and listen, I'm not. I, I, it took me a while. I mean, I, I'm a I'm a pretty friendly person anyway, and I but I realized it was important that I that I I really express how appreciative I was when someone was really doing a good job. I wanted them to know it, and I think that we need to do it. We all need to be acknowledged for what we're doing, and and it motivates us if we're being beaten down all the time. Like, you know, yeah. it's that's not gonna that's not gonna create uh, a, a better situation for your loved one. It's not. You you know, right. and, well, and it, it the, is, and for the care. I mean, for the care staff there, if you're working in an environment, for example, you know, we know that they're they're completely underpaid. They need to be paid more, more, mm -hmm. more, more. But that said, if you're working in a in a loving, wonderful environment, and it's it's a lot easier to you know, I'm not saying they shouldn't be paid more. I'm just saying. The fact that they're not paid enough and they're working in horrendous right. conditions. It's not rewarding which makes, in any way. It's not rewarding. It makes it harder on everybody. It's harder on them. It's harder on the patients or the, the, the you know, it's, it's, the it's absolutely, yeah. there is, a, it's a lose, lose everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you're, if you have, as, a, as thinking of the administration, if you have a happy staff, <laughs> it's a lot easier to say, Okay, I'm you know whatever it, and I'm thinking from their point of view, there's bottom this dollar bottom line. It's a lot easier to say you're getting a fifty cent raise instead of a seventy five cent raise. If they're happy, you know it's beneficial. Yeah. They should they should get, be getting way more. But we got to change that entire environment. You, you know, do. When we, when, I, when we when we'd walk in to visit Susie's mom, and this is because you know she was an advocate for her. Most of the staff, you know, they were they were they seemed miserable. They seem, mm -hmm. you know, and this was at a five-star facility. Mm -hmm. This was at a great facility, quote unquote. Um, it, it it just doesn't make sense in any level to have this horrible working environment. I no, think, and I, I will tell yeah. you, it's not just about the money. You you take anybody working in long-term care, and if they have a happy environment, they will take that over a few extra bucks any day. They're not there for the money to begin with. That's that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Let but let's respect them. And, and pay them a, a, a living wage and then also create like and not one or the other, but and, and. Like, let's have both. I know? agree with you. I was just going to say like the system. Yes, this is why I'm doing the documentary. It needs to change 100 percent like tomorrow. But in the meantime, what you're doing is going in and make and helping create some kind of, you know, peace and 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 a better result for everybody. 
w- within this within this system right. that we're all, that right. we're in this is the situation we're in how can right. we you know what can we do now like you said before and that's what's so important because and that that's where as a caregiver if you can you know it's important to 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 realize so everything you're saying is is if you know you do better if you know right, right. so you in knowing you're telling us what goes on in there. So we need to be cognizant, you know, because I didn't know that. This is all me learning on the trot because. Of course. How? How would I know? Yeah. How right. would I know? You think, you know, you, you see somebody in a white coat and you think that's, that you re- they have the power. They don't. You trust. You trust. Yeah. And you trust because they put on the uniform, whether it be this, whatever they're with, and you do, you trust. You think they know. You think they're there to do the best for whoever's there and and most they're of people. them are they're human beings they're too and they're, they're going through it days and <laughs> yeah they're human so you beings you got to make the best environment possible so and they're dealing with this this system too so nobody's loving the Absolutely. system except for the people that yeah. are gaining getting money from it nobody likes it nobody that's yep, nobody is going we this is great yeah. nobody is nobody nobody wants to see a vulnerable person nobody went to that business nobody no. went to do like you said they're not there for you know they did it because they care and then you get to the point where you hear people either dropping out or they just don't care anymore. They and can't. listen, They're beaten down. Can I just say something too? Just an addendum to that. Yes, there are bad actors. There are bad people everywhere. What yeah. when a situation like this is so un, and I know it is surveyed, but but not to the point that it needs to be. It, it's it's surveyed in, in places that it doesn't need to be, like you said, like the record keeping and mm-hmm. all these regulations. It needs a different kind of oversight. So so in that case, it gives a lot of um, uh, leeway for bad actors to to engage in bad behavior. That's not the commun. That's not the the norm, but does happen. And those are the things that get, you know. Uh, those are the things that get the notice. Those are the things that get the news, you know, to say, oh, this, right. this, and I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It happens a lot, but you know, sexual abuse and those kinds of things that happen in these, in, in facilities. Yes, it happens, but it ha- I think it happens, not the majority of people that are there. Those are the bad actors that happen to end up there and they're, they're the outliers. They're not, they're not the norm, but they get a lot of attention because they slipped by because it's easy to, it's easy to, and it's, you know, and there's, and there's vulnerable people. It's like, unfortunately, when children get sexually abused because they're, it's easier because they're vulnerable. Right. And, um, and you don't, you know, just don't assume you don't assume, Oh, we're, we're in a medical situation that would never happen. It happens, but that's why there needs to be right. better oversight. So, um, but, but for the most part, like what you're saying is, People are there because they want to be there because they love what they're doing. They're vocational caregivers, providers. They're caregivers. Yeah. And they have the heart for it. But if you're not supported as a caregiver, then it's going to, it'll, it'll just chop you down at the most basic fundamental level of who you are at your core. And so what are you going to do? You're going to try to go somewhere else. That's why the turnover is so high. You're going to try to go somewhere else that fulfills that. And, you know, and you just keep looking and you keep looking. And, you know, then eventually sometimes people just leave the industry because they're like, it's just not possible. So, you know, that's why I say. Like the moral injury, like you said, the moral injury is just horrible. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, um, I think that, you know, just. We, we've got to invest in the workforce. I've been speaking a lot about that lately. And, you know, there there is call, there's calls for more funding for um, survey and, and um, oversight, which I am an, I support regulations. We need regulations. If we don't have regulations, then things will go to the opposite extreme. Um, we, we need more collaboration and help too. So more people like me can come on site. You know, you know, the hardest part about my job. Now the work I do is free for the nursing homes. They don't even pay me. They get, it's funded through CMS. The hardest part about my job is getting in the door because people don't trust that when I'm there, that they're then going to get in trouble no matter what. 
no matter what. I saw one of your videos. When, where you, I saw that in your video that you post on and your And you know website. why? Because they know that it's not right. They know what what the the practices that they're doing are not right. No, it, no, they, they no. It's no not fear. just that. No, it's not just that. It's 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 just the industry. It's such a punitive. Like there's so much. It's so punitive in the sense that that it's that nitpicky culture of what I'm telling you too. Of of like they're just there's not a supportive environment either. Right, but it's they're not, but it's they're, not supportive. But the punitive, the, the aspects of, of, of punitive nature goes to the people, goes to the front line. So that's why it doesn't, right. those, those punitive, you know, the actions, the punitive actions that happen don't really affect the upper tier. That's just cost of doing business. They don't right. really care. And all they're going to do is like, you know, that's good, the, the crap is going to roll down the hill and they're going to be, you know, it's going to be like, hey, you guys screwed up. And they don't really, it, it, it's, they're so far removed from it that they have no idea. It's like running a restaurant, you know, over the telephone and just like, they're not there. They don't know what goes on. They're not in the trenches. They don't understand it. But, yeah. But we need, we need, as we said before, we need different regulations, but I think the punitive part of it isn't enough. Meaning that when, when people are, when these companies are really doing bad things, they're not being punished enough. They're not. It, they're, there's no. It's like it's it's water off their well, back. So I just said it. No, I I, I yeah. definitely. See, yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, there are definitely those situations that occur, and then so then the opposite side of that is then to show that you know it, it is working. Then you might give a citation to a building that you know, like I talk in my book. One facility was cited because the nurses didn't disinfect their pens after sharing it, or something like that. So then it becomes so ridiculous that then the whole survey process becomes ridiculous. And so it's not really effective in what it needs to do. No, so that's so what it's I'm optics. That, that whole, it, it's optics. Yeah. It's, it's basically, yes. you know, they got to find something, so they'll find that, right? right? And, yeah. and again, the low-hanging fruit. So it's like, let's right. do this. And it's stupid. You know, I mean, just as a, as a consumer, I mean, Don and I would go to visit my mom, and sometimes we'd go there and, We'd have to, they, they had to sign in and you had to sign in and you had to bring your test results and you had to and temperature and you had to put the gloves and this and everything. And then sometimes we'd walk in and there'd be nobody there. We'd just walk in. <laughs> it's like five star, five star facility, folks. I mean, so where's the consistency, right? right? So, and if it's happening there, it's happening everywhere. And that's the problem. And so, and it is too much for, the the front line to handle it's too much responsibility it's too much because it well takes their the, job you know, their job is to 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 deliver quality care, care to the residents you know and they Full stop you know they they do not need to be dealing with all the other you know trauma that they do so, agreed i agree yeah, with you yeah. you're doing such a good service you're doing what you're doing is so important it really is and it, it's it's um it's extraordinary and it's really basic and and like I can't believe that this program just started basically it just seems so well and my thing is like we 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 have to really advocate for funding you know to keep doing this work because it you know I say like we need we need to do more we need to do more of this and but we need funding you know and and because the nursing homes are not they don't have the funding to pay for this and um, so we need, we need more support to help them as well. Where would that come from then? Where do, where would you the see government. it from? Okay. Mm -hmm. The government. Yeah. Okay. From so that's CMS. A <laughs> yeah. That's a challenge. So CMS. Well, but you know, there, so CMS has, you know, they have certain budget for nursing homes. I know there's been, you know, talk about rolling that back. But that's why I'm always, you know, trying to say we need more, we need more support, you know, if, and that's why I always say too, like, you know, if you put it into organizations that can help support too, and then like, for example, the facilities that I talked about that get to work with us for, for 30 facilities that get to work with us for a year, like that's going to be major data driven. We're going to be looking at how their infections decrease, like we're, you know, we can look at how this funding is doing good, you know, we can show that. 
That'll um, be and huge. we can show yeah. the improvements. <laughs> yeah. You know. Because if so. you have numbers like that, if that's, I mean, it's it's like you know where businesses. When I think when somebody first came up with maternity leave, you know, they're all right. oh, I can't. That's going to be expensive, and then, and then finally, when you show how it actually benefits the company and ben benefits everyone, then suddenly there's maternity leave. Then there's paternity leave. It, it's right. getting those figures and showing the real life, yeah. you know, uh, use of it that that can change things in the long run, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have to, you know, demonstrate that we're, we're demonstrating that working collaboratively, not just in a punitive sense, is helping them and, you know, can go a long ways. Because even like currently the certific the with a regular, so for example, if I'm surveyed and I get a tag or I get a deficiency, I have 10 days to fix that to show the state that I'm in correction. Well, if you have something that's deep in your culture it's you're not gonna fix it in 10 days i mean you can show it on paper all day long but guess what after 10 days everything's going back to the same way yes. so you know that's why we we are i'm a huge advocate we need time we need time to get in there and work with them and change the culture and provide the education and we can't just say oh in 10 days fix it and you're good it doesn't work that way I think they're being directed, though, to do that from a, I'm talking about not nonprofit. I'm talking about, you know, the for-profit facilities there. It's basically they're sha everyone's shackled, you know, by uh, just get it done, you know, just check off the box. Well, they have to. Ten, they have 10 yeah. days. Yeah, yeah 10 so days. they have to do it. Right, so, they have to. But what I'm saying is that's not sufficient. It's not sufficient. But, you know, yeah. So in the meantime, you're right. You guys need to be in there more. And, and, you know, and, and pick up the slack where they, where they can't because of, because of the culture that they're in. Yeah, and, we, and, we can yeah. say you have to show, like, if you have an immediate jeopardy or you have something that is causing great harm, yes, you show that that's corrected immediately. But mm -hmm. then, or I should say, and, <laughs> yes. not but, and, yeah. you show that that is corrected over time and stays corrected, not just we fixed it 10 days and we're done, we're cleared. No. Let's let's do it for another six months or a year and make sure that that really is not occurring it. anymore. Right, mm -hmm. really, yeah. really implement it. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, so what's so t so again? Your next book? Do you have a name for it yet? You know, I've gone through several names. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I'm thinking um, the bridge and um, successfully navigating senior care. Um, that's, I like the that's bridge what's sticking right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, I always say that I walk of... to my mom over the bridge, so that's a good metaphor yeah. for me. I like it. Yeah, I like it. It's but, very um, poignant. Yeah, and you know, I've done a lot of great interviews. I just get so excited when I hear, you know, I I learn what people are doing, and they're yeah. really doing some great work. And if we can highlight that and showcase that. And give our loved ones options. So I'm also wanting to create like a workbook with it. So consumers have, you know, more if they can take notes and they can, you know, really, really have something to like, a, you know, so, something to use as they document their journey. But mm -hmm. I dive deep into like the five star process. And is it really five star? And, you know, like really exploring how to find the right I roll, place I roll. <laughs> the right questions to ask. Well, you know, Susie, on the on CMS website, in the very first paragraph, it says, do you know, do not use this as a, you know, this this is not what you should basically determine. Exactly. You know, for, for the Isn't that care, sad? So. Isn't that sad? They have a rating system and they have to have a caveat for it. <laughs> right. That, don't listen to it. Don't really pay attention to it. It's, you know. Yeah. If five star ish. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible terrible so i i think you know after talking to you so much and just realizing like we have to follow our intuition we have to talk to people we have to um you know i talk a lot about our own advocacy for our loved ones and you know like how we how we so you know really take care of our loved ones in this situation and not just um kind of get pushed over you know too and you just just the importance of um, how we can support our loved ones in this situation, but but we do need solutions now, and and I do I am seeing them, 
and you know it's it's really cool. yes there are th- they're there. I, I agree they're out there they are out, out there, there. And you're providing them <laughs> and definitely gonna going to highlight that in the documentary because I don't want people to think it's you know this is a exercise in futility it's not and I've listened and listen there's very big voices that I've interviewed that said it's not going to change I'm here to tell mm-hmm. you it's not going to change and I say you know what yes it can Yes, it can. It might, it's going to not be easy, but there's, you know, we've made bigger changes. It's already we've... changed. It's already. It, you're, that's you're what I was just going to say. Right it yeah. is yeah. changing right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but there, and you but have strong people, leaders. Yeah. You have strong leaders who have said, look, I still want to be in long-term care and I still want to care for this population. So I'm going to go do it a different way over here. And that totally. those best practices will start to will start to um, pick up speed. They just they will. The models are there. It's just going to take time, you know. But I say, you know, do people say, "Oh, it'll never change or we should just close all nursing homes?" I'm like, "Well, what's that we can't that's not our solution because no. we need pe- people today need this level of care. That's we are right. not a society that has raised up our families to where we're all living in the same household and we care for I mean, we just don't have that. Some communities do, but overall, that is not our culture. Because we so, also need to shift the, our, our perception and perspective on our elders and how we view them ourselves right. because they're also, you know, societally or, or socially, disre- you know, they're dismissed. They're just disregarded as, right. as you know, and, and, and we have been, we've grown up like that to think that way, you know, it's like, youth is good i'd rather get rather die before i get old and all that kind of stuff it's like we just don't think i mean i saw it so much in in the the homes or the facilities when i visit my mom i see it i saw it it's painful to watch it's painful right. so you know no and, one would say close the hospitals you know, right exactly no. <laughs> you know, it's like, but let's close the nursing, nursing right. facilities. Right, because it doesn't because matter. there's problems. Yeah, yeah well, they're, it doesn't matter. They're really, dying you know, anyway. So. They're dying. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to yeah. leave you with this this nice little, like, uh, story, this anecdote that, that this awesome Michael Broska, who's the this elder care lawyer who does it because he cares so much, and he says, if I can change one family and make them feel a little bit better, it's never about the money. And, um, and I, I said, how do you do it every time? Like, how do you get up and say, I know it's, I'm not going to really make a change, but, and he goes, well, and maybe, you know, the story people out there, but I think it was so lovely. He said, do you know the story about the starfish? And I said, no. And he said, I said, tell me. And he said, well, there's a, a, this grandfather and his grandson are walking down the beach and there's waves coming in. And every time a wave comes in, it, it brings in a starfish. And the grandfather would bend over, pick up the starfish, and throw them back in the water. And Ed kept doing that over and over. And there was like hundreds of them that would get washed up. And his grandson said, Grandpa, why do you keep throwing one back in? There's so many of them. What's the point? And he goes, it doesn't matter. He goes, well, it matters to that starfish. And that's all we can do. So we have to start with one starfish at a time because it matters. It matters. Absolutely. And if we all t- throw one starfish back, wouldn't that be cool? I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I think right. it's, you know, we have to get back to simple thinking and really realize that these are human beings and it does matter. Right. So, because we love them, and why do we always say we that, do. Don? We love them. We do. We love them because, as we all know, that love is powerful, love is contagious, and love conquers all. So, we want to thank our guest, Dr. Buffy Lloyd Krejci. Uh, and do, do def- definitely pick up her book. We'll, we'll have all the links in the show mm-hmm. notes. Um, please like, subscribe to us, and please definitely check out the opportunity to uh, be a part of our movement with uh, No Country for Old People. Uh, you know, no, there's no dollar figure too small. And uh, <laughs> if nothing else, National Consumer <laughs> we'll, we'll, National we'll, National Consumer Voice. Go to their website. Definitely. And uh, and we'll have and Dr. Dr. Buffy's going to be uh, in our documentary. So up there, at URL. She's going to be there. She's, and and as you can tell from this, she's going to be a, an important part of it. So very important. Uh, thank, thank you, you for, Dr. Thank Buffy, you for watching and listening. Oh, you thank, you. thank you, everybody. Have a good one. Oh, my pleasure. Bye bye.